Welcome to How to Save Your Marriage with Nicola Beer, a full show of tips and practical strategies to repair, rebuild, and strengthen your relationship. If you are currently stuck, wondering if your marriage can be saved, or you know you want to save it but don't know how to go about changing it, this show is for you. To book your free marriage strategy session with Nicola, get the free marriage ebook or donate. If you are enjoying the show and want to help keep it flowing, visit www.nicolabeer.com. Hi and welcome. So happy you're here. Today I'm going to be talking about what to do if you really absorb the emotions of others, if you're a highly sensitive person and you are affected by others' emotions and feelings. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. And then how you can change it. And I'll share some stories of people who have changed some things to protect themselves and where it comes from. Because it can affect the person who feels that they are carrying and feeling and absorbing the emotions of others. And it also affects the person in a relationship with them because they can feel sometimes that they can't be themselves, they can't express their emotions without their partner overreacting. So this is about helping people and helping relationships if one or both of you are very sensitive to others' feelings, others' emotions, and how to help yourself by protecting yourself and and I'll talk a little bit more about what that protection can look like. So do you find yourself feeling really affected by things that go on around you? Do you feel yourself being really in tune with the emotions of others? Do bright lights and loud sounds sometimes overwhelm you? Do you feel exhausted if you've been out socialising with people who are struggling And do you take that on? Do you process their problems? If these resonate with you, you may be what has been termed empath, empathetic. And I'm going to talk, as I mentioned today, about this. And I'm also going to do another follow-up on this episode, which is how to show empathy if it doesn't come natural for you to show empathy. So we're going to look at the two (laughs) opposite ends of the, the spectrum. So... A term has come out called highly sensitive person. And this was termed by Elaine Aron. And she was the first one to introduce the term highly sensitive person, HSP. And in simple terms, it's people who are very highly sensitive and highly sensitive in sensory processing. So what does it mean? Sensory processing is when you process things around you much deeper than most other people. It can, you can read situations for what they are than what's being shown on top. You can feel into the emotions of others that are pretending to be okay. You're more in tune with feelings and emotions of others. And this could be with a stranger, it could be with someone close. And for some people, they go as far as taking on the pain and on the feelings of others. And this is in line with what empaths go through or people that define themselves as an empath, believe that they are an empath, that's how they're going to be, and that's how they have to live their life. And I often help empaths to break free, to keep the positive characteristics of being loving and kind and compassionate without carrying the emotions of others. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about highly sensitive people because they're quite interconnected. So often when empaths come to me for help, they feel overwhelmed with their own life events and the events that are happening to those that they love or those around them, and where they find it quite hard to focus and to complete their daily activities. And this can really impact a person's day-to-day life, as often they need downtime if they're around people that are going through a lot at the moment. And with the news and everything like that that's happened over the past few years, they can really assume and consume those negative events. They can really put themselves in everybody else's shoes and sometimes they carry that with them. For example, I worked with a lady who would constantly overthink situations based on the emotions of others. She was constantly trying to read the other person's emotional state that she didn't end up enjoying herself. 
She was more concerned if the person was upset or stressed, even if they just weren't their usual self. And it used to bother her so much that she would reflect on this person's problems at home. It would consume a lot of her time and energy. And after just a simple dinner, even with just one person, she would feel really drained. She would think about it again and again and again. And this is really common for empaths. And of course, that's a, a loving, caring thing if that person is your child. However, you also have to ask yourself the question, is this helping anyone? Is this helping me? And is it the, help, the person that I'm having a lot of empathy for? It's very similar to when people feel guilt for things they've done. And when I help people to release the guilt and forgive themselves, is that guilt serving anyone? No. Often it's hurting the person and it's, it's not helping the other person. And sometimes it can hurt the person that's carrying the guilt so much that they're doing less actions that they need to do to help other people. I'm going to explain two intensive breakthrough sessions that I've recently done with a highly sensitive person and with an empath and how we enabled them to break free from the patterns that were hurting them in just three days of three intensive sessions, three hours, three hours, three hours over three days. So the first person I'll, I'll talk about was Tara and she was struggling with overwhelming guilt. Her marriage had ended and she no longer felt attracted to her husband and that's why it ended. She really felt she had no attraction towards him and she'd fallen in love with someone else at work. And when she reviewed the relationship, she realised that she'd been looking after him more like a child and that for the 12 years they were married, it was more of a parent-child relationship. And she just got to a point where she felt, I'm empty, I can't give any more. And she fell in love with someone at work because the person at work was different. How? Because he loved and protected her. He was giving her the love and affection and attention that she felt was never given to her. And so when we looked at her life and when she wanted to break the pattern of absorbing other people's emotions, when we looked at how she wanted to release the guilt that she was carrying for ending her relationship, I noticed that, or she noticed as well, that across all of her relationships, she was the one caring for, nurturing, giving, giving financially, giving emotionally, putting herself last, putting them first. Her empath way of being was rescuing others. She took her sister through rehab in her own home. She helped her sister detox from the drugs. She supported her physically, emotionally, financially. She supported her husband financially. And she was just carrying a lot of other people's problems. Because she had a belief, when we got to the core of it in this breakthrough on the first day, we realised why this patterning, pattern was happening. It was because she believed that to love someone, you have to take on their problems and their emotions. To show love, you carry their pain, you feel their pain, as if it's your own pain, and then that is how you show love. So the reason that she came to me was because she was feeling very dark. Uh, she was having very dark thoughts that she was such a terrible person, that she didn't deserve to be happy, that she didn't deserve to be free, to live her life for herself. She didn't deserve to be loved because she was not loving, because she stopped caretaking for her husband. And she felt that this made her a horrible, unlovable, bad person. So very quickly we realised that this decision, that the only way to show love or that showing love is carrying the pain and the emotions of other people, and that to show love you need to take on all of them, their emotions, their pain, as if it's your own, and show them that you're suffering with them. When we got rid of that, she was free. She could set healthy boundaries with those that she loved, she could say, I love you, I'm going to care for you, I'm going to do what I can, but I love myself first 
And that means I'm not going to do things that's going to hurt me. And carrying the pain of other people, absorbing their emotions and their stresses, is not self-loving. So this was a major breakthrough in our, on our first day of the three days. Because once you realise that and saw that you don't need to carry this from other people, she felt so much lighter. She felt peace and she realised that she needed to create a plan. And that's what we did on the third day. A plan of how she wanted to be, how she wanted to show love to herself and to other people. And she no longer feels the need that she has to rescue other people. And we wanted to install that habit and not have her go back to the old pattern. So I created a protective shield meditation, hypnotherapy track that she listened to every day for three weeks to install these new habits and ways of thinking and ways of being, which is basically a protective bubble that she created around herself So that negative energy just comes towards her, bounces off, she sends love back and she loves but without absorbing the the emotions and pains of others. And I thought this would be a really great topic because if you're married to someone, in a relationship with someone that is an empath, that is absorbing everything, with everything that's going on in the world right now and if you're having relationship struggles, they're going to feel everything so intensely that they may be tired, they may resort to unhealthy habits to try and cope, to block out those emotions. Some people turn to food, drugs, alcohol, gaming, other addictions. And they turn to this because they just want to distract themselves from feeling all of these other emotions. And they may have dark thoughts. They may feel that, like this Lady Tara did, that she is a bad person. So it's important, if you do have a belief that you have to absorb the pain of others to show love, that you switch that, that you change that. Another man that I worked with recently that did my three-day intensive breakthrough, he was grieving his dad's death that happened 18 years before we worked together, so 18 years prior. And he was unable to let go of the grief of his father dying when he was young. He was a teenager and he could not really stop feeling the pain of that. And of course, a lot of people, when they go through the anniversary, when they remember their parent, they feel sad. That's natural. But for him, the grieving was almost daily, definitely weekly, and it was affecting his life. And then when other people were unwell or he lost a person that he knew, that he wasn't even close to, he felt so much emotion because he had so much unresolved grief. And he was carrying that emotion as if it had happened a few months ago or a few weeks ago. And so what happens with unresolved grief, unresolved emotions, is they kind of just stack up And then as soon as something comes along that reminds you of that emotion, because this is how our unconscious mind works, it stores things in folders, all of the anger's in a folder, all of the grief's in a folder, all of the the sad events, all of the hurt events, all of the guilt events, they all kind of are on triggers. And when we release the grief, he was able to move forward. But the reason he came to me was not because of the grief of his father passing 18 years before. The grief was he came to me with was because his wife had cheated on him three years ago. And the pain of that, the suffering of that, was so intense. Three years later, he was reliving the hurt, the grief, the loss. Because what is grief? Grief is processing losses. So when someone loses someone, of course, that's a loss. When someone cheats on you... You feel a loss, a loss of how you saw that person. Maybe you saw that person on a pedestal. Maybe you thought that person loved you and would never hurt you. And you lose that image. That image gets smashed. Maybe you lose the image of the marriage that you, in the relationship that you thought you had. Maybe you lose your dreams of the future in that moment. Maybe you lose trust. Of course, most people lose trust. 
lose a sense of safety, lose a sense of security. So when people go through losing someone, and just the same way when they go through being cheated on, it can feel so overwhelming because there's many losses at once. So this is why he came to me. He came to me because he knew for the past three years, since his wife had an affair, he was angry, he was sad, he was acting out these emotions, arguing all the time, bickering over nothing. He'd become miserable, easily irritated, and he was really worried because... He couldn't control it, or he felt like he couldn't control it. And this was these outbursts were happening on a daily basis, and they were happening in front of his children. And he was like, I have to change this, Nicola. I do not want my children to see me being negative, to see me getting angry over small things, to be annoyed by small things. I just want to be able to live my life. So he came. In the first day, we discovered that in the first day the the first day of the breakthrough session it's basically where I'm going into the detailed history of somebody he found number one he takes every single thing personally absorbs everything as if it's happening as an attack on him so he's taking everything personally in a negative way he'd lost belief in himself he believed that if you put yourself before others you're selfish and he felt that if he didn't grieve his father then he may lose the memories of his dad. And he didn't want to lose, of course, he didn't want to lose the memories of his dad, so he felt like he had to carry that sadness and the, 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 the feeling sad about his dad not being there again and again and again. And he also, which is the kind of breakthrough, as well as all of those, realised that he had made a decision that he cannot forgive. And because he made that decision that he could not forgive... He could not forgive himself for the stress he put his father through when he was a teenager. He couldn't forgive his wife for cheating on him. He also couldn't forgive friends, so he lost a lot of friends because if they didn't treat him how he treated them, which was with a lot of love and kindness, then he, he cut them out. And the decision that he made early on in his life, I can't forgive, was affecting every single area of his life. So once we deleted that decision, once we helped him to be free, everything shifted. And greatly now, he was able to forgive himself. He was able to celebrate his dad's life instead of living through the pain. He was able to forgive his wife. And they've now booked a retreat at the end of the year fingers crossed, crossed uh, COVID permitting, to renew all of their wedding vows. And they're doing great rituals together to celebrate life and to get into that gratitude. So I guess what I'm really trying to get across by sharing these examples is what are your beliefs about being an empath? What are your beliefs about love? What are your beliefs about forgiveness? about guilt, about cheating, about grief. Because our beliefs will impact every single area of our life. So rather than, like a lot of psychologists write about, oh, you're an empath, that's the way you're going to be, you're going to carry the emotions of others, you're a highly sensitive person, you're going to be like this, you're a narcissist, you're going to be like this, you're, you've got this, you know, these labels, I really believe, and that's why I've, I, I, I'm going to create different podcasts on this topic as, the, as it comes up, but I really believe that these labels are just absolutely pointless. They hurt people. Great, if you can identify a few traits and reading about them and researching them helps you to look at the patterns Once you've got those patterns, once you've got those behaviours and everything is about behaviour, change the behaviours. Break it down. I mean, most of these labels, if we go and research them on the internet, we can probably all identify with one or two of them. Does that put you in a box and say, this is how I'm going to be for the rest of my life? You've got to choose, is being an empath working for you or not? And if it is working for you, amazing. And if it's not working for you, if it's holding you back from fully enjoying your life, from having a great relationship, 
maybe it's time to shift some things. So here are what some of the labels will call a highly sensitive person or an empath. They'll say that you reflect and think deeply about everything. So this is a good thing, right? We want to think deeply and reflect about things. If you're doing that to beat yourself up, if it's hindering you, is it good? Do you need to create a new habit for yourself? Another trait that people identify with empaths is they get very overwhelmed. So we need to look at what is the cause of that overwhelm and how can you protect yourself? Whether it's doing like the hypnotherapy meditation that I, I did with that lady or doing something else. If you empathize with everyone, that's great, isn't it? Or are you doing it at a level where it's actually harming you? Are you struggling to set boundaries? You can change that. Everything can be changed. And that is the point. You know, whenever I work with someone, all I look at is what are their beliefs? What are the unresolved emotions that they're still carrying? Are these beliefs and emotions helping them or are they not helping them? And if there needs to be boundaries, what are the boundaries that need to be put in place so they feel good about it? I also find that work stress can be very difficult for so-called empaths because they will really feel that they have to please everybody. So was there a decision or a belief that was created that you have to please everybody, that you have to put yourself last in the workplace environment. When we switch that with someone, they also become free. Another thing is making deeper connections with people. This is a great thing that empaths are really good at doing. And for some people, it's what makes their life a great success. They have great deep relationships, they have amazing work relationships, they're good in their job, everybody loves them, it works really well. Other people, they make deep connections but they don't have any filters so they make deep connections with maybe people that aren't very positive, aren't sharing good values with them and then it can be unhealthy. So rather than look at like the empath or the highly sensitive label, look at what's working, what do I want to keep and what would I like to change? And knowing that everything can be changed. Everything comes down to behaviours. Often it can also be a way to avoid conflict, getting consumed by the energy of others. That means that you are a sensitive person, that you're in tune. How can you use that for your advantage? How can you use that to protect yourself? If you change that filter of not taking everything to heart, not taking everything personally, everything is going to, to also change as well. So I think I've really hopefully got the point across there. Choose what's working, change what's not working. So some of the things that you can do is to educate yourself, okay? If it helps, yeah, look at all the different traits that different psychologists have come up with for empaths. And then choose, okay, what behaviours and traits do I like? What would I love to change? And then get some support to change them if you are unable to change them by yourself. Definitely look at self-love and self-care because you are also worthy of looking after and protecting yourself. And also get some support for setting boundaries if you find that you don't know how to set your own boundaries, you don't know what's healthy or not. Sometimes it can be difficult if we are stuck in our own head. So looking and talking it through with someone, what is a good way to love? What is a good way to be a positive, kind person without hurting or harming myself? What do I need to say no to? What do I need to, to stick up to my, for myself for? The next is leading a healthy lifestyle. We want to be leading a healthy lifestyle. That includes everything. Time off work, time away from negative emotions, sleeping, water, food, exercise. It's all the basics. We all know it. And often if I do feel unwell, I look at my life, I look at those areas and I say, okay, I need to make a change. What have, what, what have I let slide? 
while I'm feeling a bit ill this today. Okay, I didn't drink enough water. Okay, I didn't eat enough vegetables. Okay, I put work before my exercise. Okay, I had one too many wines or whatever it is. You know, we all we have the answers within us. You can you know exactly. You don't need someone to tell you. Although sometimes having a coach or a mentor can help us uh, stay on track. Sometimes we do need to be reminded. But you know exactly what to do. Just take some time out for yourself and change something. And you'll feel great again very quickly. But the last thing is really very simple. And it's so difficult to do in this, this day and age. But we do need to switch off from social media, from the news, from electronics. And if we don't, it can affect our sleep. It can affect our sense of feeling good. So if you feel that it's not working for you, the amount you're consuming, your technology habit, set yourself a new goal to change it. So if you're struggling with any behaviours that you would like to change, with any relationship struggles that you would like to correct and get into that positive, happier place, then do reach out to me. You can book a call with me on my website and I can share a little bit more about my breakthrough sessions or working with me one-on-one -on -one if you're ready to take that step. You can also find my audio programs, which are much more affordable. They're also on my website. And you can join the Facebook groups for free. I have two Facebook groups. One is on relationships, which is about empowering yourself and learning from the wisdom of the others in the group, going through relationship struggles. Every week I do a live topic in there. We've got an affair recovery, one coming up very soon. And there's also all different topics on communication, healing, real rebuilding trust. And then I have another Facebook group, and this one is called Vinana. And this one is a, a mix of everything to support people to live a happy and good life. So this includes meditations, dancing, goal setting, living healthy, being free. And again, it's free. I do a live talk in there every week. So do reach out. If you would like to join them, all you have to do is search Relationship Advice and Strategies Nicola Beer for that one. And the other one's Vinana, which rhymes with banana, as my mum said. V-I-N-A-N-A. -A. And I think you'll find it anyway if you just find me on Facebook. So, thanks for listening. Looking forward to the next episode where I'm going to be talking about how to show empathy if you find it hard. Or if your partner finds it hard, you may want to ask them to have a listen. From my heart to yours, take care. Bye. Thank you for listening to How to Save Your Marriage with Nicola Beer. To book your free marriage strategy session today, you can visit www.nicolabeer.com, where you can also get the free marriage fixing ebook, request a topic for the show, and make a donation if the show has been of benefit to you and you want to help keep it going. We wish you an amazing love-filled day ahead.